Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. Today we'll be looking at the gross anatomy of the vagina. We'll be looking at the gross anatomy of the vagina. So let's look at the definition of the vagina. The vagina is defined as a distensible fibromuscular tube that extends from the cervix down to the external vagina orifice. It is a distensible tube, a distensible fibromuscular tube that extends from the cervix here down to the external vagina orifice. And the external vagina orifice serves as the opening eh, into the vagina canal. So the external vagina orifice serves as an opening into the vagina canal and this is the vagina canal so this is the vagina and the vagina is about 8 to 10 cm in length so this vagina canal is about 8 to 10 cm in length so let's look at the functions of the vagina the first function of the vagina is that the vagina allows the passage of the menstrual fluid and uh, other content of the menstrual fluid. It allows it to pass through its canal. That's the first function. Then the second function of the vagina is that it um, allows the passage of the penis and ejaculates during sexual intercourse. That's the second function of the vagina. Then the third thing the vagina do is that it allows, you know, the vagina is the inferior part of the bed canal. When we did uterus, I told us that uterine cavity is the superior part of the bed canal. So this is the superior part of the bed canal. Now the vagina canal is the inferior part of the bed canal. So it allows the passage of the fetus during uh, delivery. So these are the three main functions of the vagina. Then let's look at the communications and the vaginal wall. The vagina communicates with the cervical canal superiorly. So this is the cervical canal or the cervix. So the vaginal canal communicates with the cervical canal superior and it communicates with the external vaginal orifice inferior and the external vaginal orifice opens into the vestibule of the vulva so the vulva is the external genitalia so it opens into the vestibule of the vulva the wall of the vagina is divided into two the anterior wall and the posterior wall and the wall of the vagina is collapsed so in the normal vagina you will not see the canal open like this you will not see this wall separated the wall are always collapsed and they lie near to each other except something passes through it and it opens so if you cut the vagina in a transverse section the wall of the vagina looks kind of like uh, H, this H now, if you are looking at it from a transverse section, you see that the wall is collapsed and it looks exactly like this in a transverse section. So, having said that, let's look at the policies. The vagina has to recess the anterior and the posterior vaginal phonics. So, you can see this, this, uh, recess now. This recess, this is known as the anterior vagina, and this one is known as the posterior vagina. So this is the anterior. This is the posterior. And the posterior is more deeper than the anterior vagina uh, phonics. So the both of them are known as the anterior and posterior vaginal phonesis. So let's look at the relations of the vagina. 
and see the other. The vagina is related to the urinary bladder. That is, the urinary bladder lies anterior to the vagina, and also the urethra lies anterior to the vagina. Then posteriorly, the rectum lies posterior to the vagina, the anal canal lies posterior to the vagina, and also the lectouterine pouch lies posterior to the vagina. Then on both sides, laterally, you see the levator ani, and also you see the ureters there. So these are the structures that are related to the vagina. Let's look at the muscles of the vagina. The, these muscles constrict or contract. Eh? This muscle surrounds the vagina and contracts and also constrict. So the first muscle is the external urethral sphincter. That's the first muscle of the vagina. The second muscle is the pubo vaginalis. Then the third muscle is the, the urethral vaginal sphincter. And we also have the final muscle, which is the bulbospongiosus. So these are the four muscles of the vagina. Then the blood vessel. The arteria supplied to the vagina is through the vagina artery and also the uterine artery. Then we have the pudendal artery also. Then the venous drainage is through the vaginal venous plexus or the vaginal veins. Then Coming to the lymphatics, the different part of the vagina have different lymphatic node that drains them. The superior part of the vagina here is drained by the external iliac lymph node. The middle part here is drained by the internal iliac lymph node, while the inferior part here is drained by the superficial inguinal lymph node. So these are the lymphatics of the vagina. Then the nerve supply to the vagina is through the uterovaginal nerve plexus and also the pudendal nerve. These are the nerve supply to the vagina. So let's go over to the clinicals. We have the obstetric fistula or the vaginal fistula. What does this mean? This simply means a a tear eh, in the vagina. You know that the vagina have uh, surrounding pelvic structures. Uh, in a situation where there is difficult vaginal delivery and also prolonged labor, you notice that the vagina tends to tear, eh, and the place where it's the tear occur is dependent on the structure that is found there. Now, the example or the type of this vaginal fistula is the vesicle vaginal fistula. The vesicle vaginal fistula means that the tear occur between the vagina and also the urinary bladder. And in that situation, you notice that urine begins to flow into the vagina. Then the second one is the urethral vaginal fistula. This is the tear that happened between the urethra and also the vagina. In that situation, you notice that they, if the person wants to, to urinate, you notice urine entering into the vagina. Then the third one is the, the one that affects the rectum. That is the rectal vagina fistula. In that situation, you notice that uh, because there is a tear, around the between the vagina and rectum you notice that uh, feces begin to uh, enter into the vagina so this can result to infection of the vagina or other infection of the internal genitalia because the feces and the urine are not supposed to be found in the vagina so it may lead to infection of the internal genitalia so that is it for the vagina fistula. So we've come to the end of this teaching. I'll encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Learn with Chisholm Great. Like this video, share this video to your friends and comment on this video. Thank you very much.